Hello teachers and welcome to Give Me Five, Book One, Unit Five. This is Mini Tut and this is our lesson one. That means, of course, we're focused on our vocabulary. So here are the pages just to remind us which vocabulary we have. And um, the vocabulary, of course, is down here at the bottom. In this particular example, in this particular Mini Tut, I'm not going to elicit, I'm not going to ask the kids to give me more vocabulary than is what in the book. Uh, there's no need to right now. Um, if you want to ask kids for extensive animals, of course, you're welcome to throw them into your lesson. That's fine. So let's see how I would do this lesson. Right, I'd start off with a chalkboard. I would uh, write the title on Fun on the Farm, and I'd throw up the first five vocabulary there. Now, as I throw them up, I'm going to write them down. I'm going to go C-A-T, and the kids are going to shout out cat, C O W cow, B-I-R-D, and the kids are going to shout bird. Now the reason why I'm going to do that is because I want the kids to be really become more and more familiar with the way in which they need to revise their vocabulary and how they should really push themselves to be memorizing. Okay, This is our book one, this is already unit five, so it's quite far away, but um, it doesn't hurt to reinforce these basic concepts. Also, don't forget, you might have some uh, latecomers to your class. They might uh, be late by several weeks, and they will also need to be reminded about how to review and memorize their vocabulary. So the vocabulary here is quite simple. Cat, cow, bird is, is short, and they would have seen it previously as well. However, we're needing to get them to be able to read this very correctly and to memorize. Okay, this is one of the features or objectives of what we're needing to do with our book one level. Okay, so we've got the first five words on the board. We now throw up the next five. I will then do the same thing, H-O-R-S-E, and the kids will shout out horse. And now I will hand it over to the kids. I will, might even ask a student to stand up, and as I'm writing down the letter, the student will then say S-H-E-E-P, and then the whole class will shout out sheep. Okay, then the next kid, uh, he sits down, the next kid stands up, and she says D-U-C-K, as I'm writing it down, and then the whole class shouts out, duck, okay? So, this is how I'm going to put my um, words on the board, and then once all ten words are on the board, I will ask the kids to review this one, and then this one, um, and then we move on to our next activity. But I'll only move on to the next activity if I'm satisfied that um, teams or individuals can say these words very well. If there's some individuals that are struggling, what I might do is I might then pick out, let's say, four tricky words, horse, mouse, goat, and let's just say ow, so cow, and then I'll have a student read those, one, two, three, four, good job, done, sit down, another student will read it, one, two, three, four, good job, done, and I'll give them uh, either individual points or team points, depending on how I'm playing the game. Um, I then might choose another four words, Maybe sheep is not so easy. Er, bird is a bit tricky. Chicken, not so tricky, but it's long. And then maybe um, owl, mouse. Okay, so I'm doing a bit of overlap because, of course, I might have identified that, of course, this word here is the hardest for our students. Okay, so again, once I'm satisfied that the pronunciation is of a decent level, I'll then move on to my next activity. And so here we go. Um, the teacher will say, all right, boys and girls, I'm going to say a word and I want you to draw the picture. Now, the teacher says, all right, sheep, and then the teacher is going to draw the sheep on the board. Okay, that's how it's going to work. Um, if you have to model again, no problem, model again. All right, kids, I'm going to say another word and I'm going to draw it on the board. And so I'm going to say the word dog, and then, of course, I will draw it on the board. So I've got the sheep, now I'm drawing the dog. Now, I've modeled, it's okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a student to stand over here. The student will um, shout out one of the vocabulary, and then another student will come along, and they will then draw on the board. Now the idea is to populate the chalkboard with all of the animals. And... Uh, You'll see later why this is so, but okay, I basically want all of the animals on the board, or certainly 
uh, target animals that I, I want on the board. Now, this is one way to set up our chalkboard. You can ask the kids to draw the picture, and the more funny the picture, the more the kids enjoy it, because of course it becomes their picture. If the teacher wants to throw up a flashcard, of course, that is up to you. How to do? No problem. The, the student will say the word, a student picks up a flashcard, and then the student puts the flashcard on the board. This student then comes over here, and another student will be uh, selected. The student says, um, for example, goat. Another student picks up, picks up goat and then comes over here, and so on and so on. So that's how we're going to do it with the flashcards. Uh, same style as you do with the drawing, but it's just maybe a little bit easier. Okay, so we want our animals on the board. Now that's one way of doing it. Um, here's another way that we can do it on the board, um, and that is with competition. So draw a line down the center of the board, and the teacher's going to say, cow! And then, of course, what's going to happen? Two students are going to draw a cow, team A and team B. So in this particular example, it's green team and the white team. And then uh, the next student will come over here, and then the student will say, for example, um, pig. And then the next kids come along, and then they draw a pig. Next kid comes along, turkey, and so it is, and so on and so forth. Until we have populated our chalkboard with the animals. Now, this is going to be important because we want to reinforce the image with our word. The image with our word. And the kids have had now a lot of fun drawing the pictures, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be moving on to a bingo! So I'm going to hand out a bingo card to all of the students, and I'm going to ask them to write down random. They need to fill it up with the, with the animals that they like. So I will give them an example. I will say, uh, students, you need to um, fill up your card with, with different animals. And then I would even then say, OK, teacher's going to say the words, um, for example, cow, uh, cow, turkey, and goat. Here we go. Da da da. Bingo. And just give them the idea. Many of the kids already know how to play bingo, or I'm sure some of them do. But it's your instruction in English that just remind them of how the game is played, as well as just get some practice on that one. Okay, so you hand out your bingo card, and um, you ask the kids to then fill out the words. Now, the cool thing about this setup is that you've got the words on the board. So the kids just need to copy those words onto their sheet. Now what you're going to do is you're going to say, all right, boys and girls, um, cow. And then, of course, the kids are going to then mark their card. Uh, donkey. Okay, I don't have that one over there. Dog. Yeah, I've got that one over there. Sheep. Yay, teacher! Bingo! Now, the reason why we only have three by three, okay, it's very, very short, is because we want to play the game as many times as possible. In the, in the model, the teacher was reading the words and the kids were then selecting. Now I'm going to select the kid that said bingo, and the kid that said bingo is now going to say and select the animals that he or she likes. And we're going to see who the next kid who will be bingo um, is going to then take that place and then say those words again. So each time you play the game, of course, you're filling out the card every single time and you're giving the kids a lot of practice of writing and speaking. So it really is killing many birds with one stone with this activity over here. All right, um, then finally, if you want to step up this game up a level, what you could then do is you could then erase those words on the board and then throw in the sentence pattern that's going to come on later. And that is, I can and I can't see. I can or I can't see, depending on your pronunciation. And so what's going to happen is you'll get another student to come around over here. And the student's going to say, I can see a pig. And of course, then the kids are going to then check. I can see a dog, and the kids are going to mark it over there. I can't, or I can't, see a duck. And that's fine. There's no need to uh, mark it off on the card. So I can't see a duck. Um, 
so in this case, we are now practicing our sentence pattern, so we're anticipating what the next um, lesson is going to be all about, but it's a great way for us to introduce that to the kids in a very gentle and friendly way. Anyway, teachers, thank you very much for watching. I hope you did enjoy that uh, video clip, um, and see how it goes in your class. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care until then, and bye-bye.